The Water Festival Beach Week is starting in Pokemon Go, and today, as always, I want to go through all the tips and tricks for this event. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So this event is June 6th at 10 a.m. to June 12th at 8 p.m. all local time. Bonus during the event, we're gonna have four times duration on rainy lure modules. So two hour rainy lure module. There'll also be a global challenge during the event in which trainers need to hit 300 million nice throws as a whole combined, and we will unlock increased candy and XL candy for hitting nice, great, and excellent throws. So make sure you focus on hitting nice throws as you can in the early stages of the event so we can unlock this bonus. Wild Spawn during the event, we're gonna have Tentacool, Shelter, Krabby, Alolan Executor, Horsey, Staryu, Meryl, Wingle, Whalmer, Sfeel, Finneon, Dwebble, Frillish, Clauncher, Mantine, and Popplio. Yes, you saw Clauncher being the new shiny for this event. There'll also be a exclusive Beach Week Spotlight Hour from 6 to 7 p.m. on June 6, spawning Krabby, Kabuto, Corfish, Clauncher, and Crab Brawler in the wild more often. Also, there will be three times catch XP during this event, making it a great event to hit those excellent throws and grind a little bit of extra XP. Now, one star raids during the event are gonna have Alolan Diglett, Hisuian Quillfish, Carvana, Phoebus, and Sandy Gas. Yes, Sandy Gas, a new Pokemon coming to Pokemon Go during this event. We'll talk about if it's Evolution Palo Sand is any good soon. Three star raids during the event will have Blastoise, Gyarados, Scarfed, Lapras, and Alomomola. Five star raids, of course, will have Uxie, Mesprit, and Azelf all in their respective areas in the world, but you can remote raid these and Mega Raids with Mega Swampert. We also have some Shadow Raids during the event. In the one star Shadow Raids, we are going to have Shadow Abra, Shadow Sneasler, Shadow Mareep, Shadow Gligar, Shadow Starly, Shadow Growlithe, and Shadow Throw in the Americas and Africa region, and Shadow Sock in the Asia and Australia region. So yes, new Shadow Pokemon in Throw and Sock during this event. Also on weekends, we will have Shadow Articuno Raids. So June 10th and 11th, Shadow Articuno will be in Raids. Remember, Shadow Raids cannot be done with remote Raid Pass. There will be also new Avatar items you can buy in the shop with the Sandy Gas hat, Diver Goggles, and a Diver Outfit. Now, as always, we have some exclusive research going down during the event. Starting with the field research task, we're gonna have catch five water type Pokemon for 10 Pokeballs, catch 15 water type Pokemon for a Frillish encounter, Catch 25 water type Pokemon for a Sandy Gas encounter. Make five nice throws for a Clauncher encounter. Make five great throws for a Binacle encounter. Hatch an egg for the Lapras with a Scarf encounter. And make 10 great throws for 30 Mega Blastoise or 30 Mega Swampert energy. There'll also be that $5 exclusive timed research task that you can buy. That's going to be two pages. It's going to be on screen here. Pretty simple stuff. None of the tasks are really that hard, but it does get you a Sandy Gas encounter and, of course, the Surfer pose. Some may think this is an overpriced ticket, which it most likely is, but pretty much you're just buying the surfer pose. So it's like if you're buying a regular pose, but it's a little bit more expensive because you get a couple extra things. With the details of the way, let's get right into the tips and tricks, starting with the best wild spawn during the event. And there's actually some decent ones. Starting off with Tentacool, which evolves into Tentacruel, in which Tentacruel is a decent Ultra League Pokemon with Poison Jab, Scald, and Blizzard, making a great counter to those fairy and fire type Pokemon. We also have Shelter in there, which Shelter gets you a thousand Stardust every time you catch it. So if you need Stardust, this is one of the best events for it because every Shelter you find in the wild, you'll just get a thousand Stardust for catching it. So make sure you catch those. Krabby is also in there, which evolves into Kingler, which Kingler is a very strong water type raid attacker. You have a Lolan Executor in there, which Lolan Executor is a stage two Pokemon, giving you 300 Stardust every time you catch it. So it makes you catch those Lolan Executors. Horsey's in there, which Horsey evolves into Kingdra, in which Kingdra is a pretty good Ultra League safe swap Pokemon. Staryu's in there, which gets you 750 Stardust every time you catch it, in which another Pokemon you can get extra Stardust for. So definitely go ahead and catch those. Meryl's in there, which Meryl evolves into Azumarill. Azumarill, one of the best Great League Pokemon and has been since the start of Go Battle League. So definitely get yourself a good IV one if you don't have one, as well as Wingle, which evolves into Pelipper. Right now, one of the best Great League Safe Swap Pokemon. Very, very strong Pokemon there. We also see Sfeel in there, which Sfeel evolves into Walrin, which recently got a buff, making it much stronger in the Great League and the Ultra League in Pokemon Go PvP, and definitely a staple meta pick. We also have Dwebble in there, which evolves into Crustle. Crustle is going to be good in some limited Great League metas, like the Love Cup, if that does ever return. Frillish is in there, which Frillish evolves into Jellicent, in which Jellicent in a pretty strong Great League and Ultra League Pokemon. I wouldn't say top, top meta, but pretty, pretty strong Pokemon there. You have Mantine in there as well, in which Mantine is decent for some limited Great League Cup metas as well. And finally, Popplio, which evolves into Primarina, which Primarina is not bad for the Master League Premier Cup, as well as being a decent fairy type raid attacker. That moves us into one of the best raids during the event, starting with the Shadow Raids. Great Pokemon like Shadow Abra, which evolves into Shadow Alakazam. Shadow Alakazam, a very strong psychic type raid attacker. We also have Shadow Sneasel, in there, which evolves into Shadow Weavile. Shadow Weavile is going to be a good ice and dark type raid attacker, although it has just been recently outclassed by Tyranitar as a dark type attacker. It is still a very strong raid attacker if you get a good IV one. We have Shadow Gligar in there, which evolves into Shadow Gliscor, a very strong Great League and Ultra League Pokemon, although from the Shadow Raids, the IV floor is 666, so it is hard to get a PvP IV. Finally, Shadow Throw and Sock, not going to be very good. These are two new Shadow Pokemon, but then they weren't good non-Shadow, so they're not going to be good as Shadow. Finally, Shadow Articuno Raids this weekend. Shadow Articuno is 
going to be a good Ultra League Pokemon as well as a decent Ice type Raid attacker. So not a bad Shadow Raid boss to go after, but not the best. Definitely skip Shadow Articuno if you want. As far as regular raids, the best ones are going to be Carvana, which evolves into Sharpedo, which Sharpedo does have a mega form in the future, as well as Phoebus, which evolves into Milotic. Milotic good in the Master Premier Cup. In the three-star raids, we're going to have Blastoise, which of course does have a mega Blastoise if you need a good IV one. Gyarados as well is in there, which Gyarados is good in the Master League, as well as does have a mega form if you need a good IV mega. Lapras is in there, which Lapras is decent in the Great League and the Ultra League, although Walrin and the new Dugong are a little bit outclassed as the Water and Ice type. In the five-star raids, Uxie, Mesprit, and Azelf, none of them are really good, but Uxie might be decent with a move update in the future in the Ultra League, so definitely one you can keep an eye out for. Finally, Mega Raids for Mega Swampert. Mega Swampert being the number one Water type Ray attacker and number two Ground type Ray attacker in the game. So definitely go ahead and get yourself a good IV Swampert. That moves into Sandy Gas, though, because Sandy Gas is in the one-star raids, and is this new Pokemon Palo Sand going to be any good in Pokemon Go? Let's check it out. Sandy Gas will be available from Field Research Tasks as well as one-star raids, in which you can evolve into Palo Sand for 50 candies. Palo Sand is a Ghost and Ground type Pokemon, has an attack of 178, defense of 178, and stamina of 198, with a max EP at level 50 of 2763. For fast moves, they can learn Astonish and Mudshot, and for charge moves, Sand Tomb, Shadow Ball, and Earth Power. As far as raid attacking goes, unfortunately, Palo Sand will not be very good. It's going to rank really, really far down in Ghost type raid attackers, as well as really, really far down in Ground type raid attackers, and overall, there's a lot of better budget options for both types. Now, as far as PvP goes, unfortunately, similar thing. Looking at Palo Sand here in the Great League, I've also thrown on Golurk's matchups because Golurk is a very similar Pokemon. You'll see it does hard counter Pokemon like Registeel, Galarian Stunfisk, Bastiodon, Defense Deoxys, Vigoroth, any sort of normal Psychic or Steel type, but still loses to a lot of Pokemon, specifically those waters like Swamp or Pelipper. Even loses to Medicham, which is a Psychic type. If we take a look at in the Ultra League, very similar thing. It does have some pretty good matchups like Defense Deoxys, again, Registeel, again, Cobalion. And Gimpy are pretty hard counters, but overall its matchups are pretty neutral across the board, losing to Garatina Altered, again, Swampert, Walrin, Guzzlord, etc. And its CP is too low for the Master League. Overall, Palisand is another one of those Dex it and Leave it entries, and you're better off shiny hunting and hunting other Pokemon during the event. Now, although Palisand's not the greatest, you still want to get a lot of candy for the other wild spawns during the event, so let's go through my candy tips in Pokemon Go. Well, number one, once we've complete the global challenge and get extra candy for nice, great, and excellent throws, make sure you hit those nice, great, and excellent throws. This can be an amazing strategy to grind a lot of candies and excel candies during the event when we unlock that bonus, and if you hit an excellent throw on a Mantine, for example, you can get more excel candies if you're looking to get some excel candies for Mantine. Same goes for all the other Pokemon. You can also use Pineapple berries. Regular pineapple berries will multiply or catch candy by two and silvers by 2.34. So make sure you use those pineapple berries on those Pokemon you want extra candy for during the event. Mega Evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you Mega Evolve a Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch shares a type with that Mega, you will get extra candy. Of course, this is a water focused event. So we want to be Mega Evolving a water type Pokemon, especially a high level water type Pokemon to get a lot of candies. During this event, you can either Mega Evolve a Mega Blastoise, a Mega Slowbro, a Mega Gyarados, or a Mega Swampert to get extra candies for water types. Personally, I would go with a Mega Slowbro because that will also yield you extra XL candies for the Lake Guardians if you end up doing any of the Psychic type raids for them. Also, it is the season of Hidden Gems, which means every time you trade away a Pokemon, you're going to be getting one extra candy as well as a guaranteed XL candy. So any of these Pokemon you want extra candies, XL candies for, for example, you know, if you raid the Gyarados, the Blastoise, catching Frillishes in the wild, Pop Leos, trade those away during the season to get extra XL candies for any of this Pokemon you want to level 50. Finally, transferring Pokemon on June 20th between 6 and 7 p.m. is Sunkern Spotlight Hour, which does have a two times transfer candy bonus. So saving any of those Pokemon you want extra candies for, for example, you know, if you raid the Swamperts, any Uxie, Azelfs, and Mesprits, you can save and transfer them then for extra candy. Finally, that moves us into our Platinum Metal tips. If you don't only need 35 Platinum Metals, go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. Which one should you be focusing on during this event? Number one, of course, it's a water event. So the Swimmer Metal, cast 2,500 water types. Pretty explanatory. You can work on this very effectively. We also do have four times Rainy Lure Module duration. So the Picnicker Metal, use Lure Module to help any trainer catch 2,500 Pokemon, a great metal to work on during this event. Go to a busy area, go to a place where you know people are going to be playing and drop the lure. It'll stay there for two hours, which has a pretty high chance people will be catching Pokemon off that lure. Maybe they'll see it. They'll go over, catch a couple Pokemon, helping you work on this metal. We also do have a huge roster of new Pokemon you can raid, and that will work towards the Rising Star Metal defeat 150 species of Pokemon in raids. Make sure you raid at least every single Pokemon at least once to work a point towards this metal. For example, a Sandy Gas raid. No one's ever done those before, so that you can get one point towards this metal. Finally, the successor metal of Mega Evolve a Pokemon a thousand times. We do have that field research task for Mega Swampert and Mega Blastoise energy, as well as Mega Swampert in raids. So what you can do is you can grind a bunch of Mega energy for Swampert and Blastoise, and then just Mega Evolve them back and forth to just grind points on this metal. Of course, it might seem like a waste of Mega energy, and if you don't have a lot, maybe don't do this. But if you are a Pokemon trainer with a lot, a lot of Mega energy, you can very simply
simply just complete this metal by grinding that mega energy and then mega evolving back and forth. With that being said, that is my tips for the Beach Week event in Pokemon Go. If I miss any, please let me know in the comment section below. This is the first event of the new season, so I hope you guys are really excited and are going to have a great time. And come tune in to my live stream of me playing this event on June 7th at 10 a.m. EST. So you can come check out what the spawns actually look like and what does this event look like? Because what I say, sometimes the spawns are a lot worse than what I say. We'll see you all in the next one, guys. Follow for tips, everybody. Peace.